Hi Aries and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. Uh, welcome to February. Welcome to Aquarius season. I hope that you guys are thriving. I hope that you guys are feeling great. Um, I know that it's still the dark time of the year. I know that there's been a lot of um, difficult decision making on the table for Aries people. We're going to talk about that in today's reading. We're going to talk about uh, difficult crossroads as I really feel the lover's archetype coming up for you all uh, this month. That is one of the psychic images I got as I was meditating uh, for you for this month was the lovers. Um, I'm also kind of seeing the imagery of um, the seven of cups as well. So there's this kind of like, what am I doing this all for? You know, trying to think about like, what is the result of like this direction in a long time? What is the result of that direction in a long time? And Aries, I can kind of like heal a lot of this for you very simply right here and right now. We have to sometimes accept that we can't totally predict everything and we have to trust more in our capacity to handle things as they come. Okay, if we make a choice, if it ends up being the wrong path, we need to trust that we can backtrack or steer things in a different direction appropriately. Um, this month is where all of those pro and con lists, all of those like left or right decisions, uh, crossroads, it's going to end in February. So by this, by the time we have this huge Pisces stellium, this huge activity in your collective 12th house at the end of February, uh, there's going to be a washing away and there's going to be a new chapter that, um, becomes really, really necessary. Now, Aries, honestly, I feel as I'm getting into your energy, um, you guys need to take it easier on yourself. I feel that some of you are holding yourself to a standard that's not fair. Um, I feel that some of you are, um, also looking at perfectionism in shadow or um, some kind of like compulsive need to get things right, to be like uh, invulnerable or uh, to alleviate all insecurities. And it's very powerful. It's very executive. It's very like um, astute in some ways to have so much thought energy going into potentiality, but it kind of goes into seven of cups mode. Uh, which um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, if not, you can definitely Google that image or um, look into that and the meaning of that. And it basically means it means getting so focused on the potentials of certain situations or thinking too much conjecture or uh, consideration about what could be in the future to the extent that you lose track of where you currently are and you kind of put yourself into shadow uh, because that which is oncoming is more important to you or suggested to be more important by that overthinking syndrome than who, where, and what you currently are. Hi, Taurus, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. Uh, I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I'm coming on to talk to you about, obviously, the month ahead and uh, navigating this very imperative time for your sign. We have a lot of uh, Uranus energy coming in for you guys here a lot. Um, okay, so of course Uranus being in your sign, having been in your sign since 2018, uh, the Sun and Pluto being in the Uranus ruled sign of Aquarius, as well as Venus and Mars and Mercury, all uh, making their way through Aquarius right now too. Uh, they will square uh, Pluto, or sorry, Uranus in your sign. So there's going to be this kind of like um, 90 degree angle of major Aquarian Uranian energy combining with uh, your uh, Venus ruled Taurus energy. And it means that there is perhaps a bit of a shakeup here and it can be so positive. Um, but yeah, definitely a shakeup coming in February. Let's uh, break this down a little bit and um, get you guys prepared for uh, this month. Um, so what I'm seeing for you guys, uh, and I've been feeling this for like the last day or two as I was anticipating doing your reading, um, and it's sort of like this sweet point that you can achieve by not getting caught up on external chaos. So what I see for some of you is while it is super chaotic outside, while um, there are many perhaps unresolved issues, people might not be satisfied with you, uh, things might not feel perfect, people might be at war with each other, there might be conflict zones. While that's happening, you have an oasis of sorts that is yours. And I get this kind of juxtaposition psychic image 
uh, when I'm thinking of the Taurus Scorpio axis right now, <clears throat> where um, I see your peace not being contingent on what's happening outside of your oasis. Uh, so this is kind of like a sacred oasis vibe. For some of you, it's time to buy your own house. For some of you, it's time to um, make this material and real. Um, it could be chaotic here to live in a big apartment complex. It could be chaotic here also to have a bunch of roommates or um, situations that might defy uh, exactly what I'm talking about here. So um, now might be a time to do house hunting for some of you uh, from this, this February to May uh, 2024 time period. I'm seeing a lot of people acquire uh, new material surroundings and I'm seeing basically the creation or the investment into exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, and then having a little bit more control and a little bit more authority over when, where, and how you're um, entering into um, the outside world or uh, feeling a sense of like burden from other people's problems. Uh, regardless of your uh, physical living situation, Taurus, this needs to be cultivated in some way. Okay, hi Geminis, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, wow, what an incredible month ahead of February we have to talk about for you all. Uh, we are getting into a very clearing, purifying trine for you from the sign of Aquarius. We have the Sun, Pluto, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all making their way uh, through Aquarius this month, and we are looking at a grand scale alleviation for you this month uh, in February, Gemini. I am rooting for you. I am finally like seeing the relief that is about to be handed down onto your life. Let's really um, make space for such an incredible passage coming in this month. Do you guys feel it? Do you guys feel how things are working themselves out? Do you feel how perhaps like um, a 10 year momentum is really starting to leave and is being replaced by a different level of uh, supremacy in your life. Um, I feel that you have to uh, really access your own supreme nature here and recognize the authority that you have over your individual experience. So um, it's absolutely not quite there yet, but Jupiter is applying to your sign. Okay, uh, we are going to have Jupiter in Gemini within the next few months. Uh, so knowing that um, there might be some preparations to start in February and uh, what I've been recommending for the other signs is actually um, most paramount for you, I think, this month. And that's really setting into a powerful regiment. It's really setting into a powerful um, daily schedule and stretching things out, making things a marathon, not a sprint, to be, to be cliche. Um, and making sure that you're not cramming or that you're not getting yourself into a situation where um, you have to perform everything all at once or you have to, because uh, I know that that's glamorous, right? Like a lot of people have this like glamour wrapped around this idea of like, when I am called forth, I will perform to the most intense capacity, you know, and do everything in the most climactic way. But it's actually better to generate smaller momentum over time. This is an area I think that Gemini struggles with sometimes as a Mercury ruled sign. It sometimes forgets about the power of doing a little bit every day or the power of stretching things out um, and gaining more momentum that way. But this is actually one of the areas where Gemini really excels because if you can kind of like pull apart uh, the smaller uh, pearls of wisdom and just kind of repeat and move into cycles, you're going to start generating a lot of power. Now, um, you guys have a lot in front of you in February, March, and April, okay, before Jupiter moves into your sign. Uh, you guys need to get some material stuff in order. Where are you living? What are you eating? What are you doing for money? How are you spending money? What's your relationship like with money? And that stuff needs to be automated by the time Jupiter goes into your sign because Jupiter in Gemini is also debilitated. Doesn't mean it's going to be bad for you, doesn't mean it's going to be bad for anybody, but the way that Jupiter in Gemini expresses its shadow, debilitation, is by not having material things working in a regiment, routine, or momentum that makes sense and having to face all of that then. So I've been recommending to most people, like, utilize this time of, like, February and March to, like, get that stuff automated and in shape. 
Um, I'm seeing some people have incredible luck with like restoring their home, uh, purchasing new homes, uh, moving into places that make more sense for them, and gearing up for an incredible communicative expansion that the positive of Jupiter and Gemini can give. Hi Cancers and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about this um, very sensitive month ahead of February that we have for you all. What a shakeup, what a um, what a possibly invigorating shift uh, coming up this month as we have a really profound Aquarius stellium. I'm looking forward to talking to the meaning of this season for you all Cancers because for you all it's a little bit more of a a uh, challenge, but uh, perhaps because of that with a lot more rewards on the line as well. There are a lot of themes coming up for you all about ancestral momentum, about um, grounding versus breaking the uh, line of momentum that things have been on for a very long time. I feel that all cancers are being challenged in this month to uh, bring things up to date and to recognize uh, stagnation or uh, things which have been deteriorating as a sort of justification for profound shift rather than a need to cling to sentimental um, overthinking. So sentimentality is a really big challenge coming up for you all this month. As you know, the sign of Aquarius makes a quincunx angle uh, to Cancer, which is one of the more challenging angles. Uh, and we have a lot of it. We have the Sun, we have Pluto, we have Mercury, Venus, and Mars all moving through uh, Aquarius, which will be quincunxing what you have in Cancer. And um, as a fourth house person myself, I've really been consciously tuned into the challenges of this. Um, it's been very hard, perhaps, as Cancer people to have been given so much authority over something or to have been bestowed something that had been perhaps stewarded or curated in the wrong momentum. So you guys are having to like kind of steer the boat right. Uh, you guys are the captain here, funnily enough. You are uh, being delegated some type of authority here. Your signature is what's going to do it. And you are going to be the one who um, shoulders some of the material context from here on out. And um, this is a situation... Okay, so... so I'm just kind of having quite a clear intuitive stream here. Um, for those of you who have something that has been put onto your plate or you have something that has had a difficult long momentum like over the last 10 or so years, um, this is just a very specific message coming through for you, um, it's going to be totally fine. Um, the face value of the situation that you're dealing with actually matters less than the refreshing of energy over it. So what do I mean by this? Um, some of you might be caught up on the way something looks or the way that something is branded, and we need to look more towards the substance and the way that there is a perhaps rising from the ashes happening at a substantial level or a bringing back to life of something that was in a really negative momentum for a long time. That is where I want you guys to focus more on rather than the way that things are expressed or branded or um with face. Hi Leos and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm so excited to be coming on and talking to you about the momentous month of February. What an awesome month for you all. Perhaps you're the most activated sign um, of the month as we have your ruling body, the sun, that just moved in lockstep with Pluto into your axis of Aquarius. We're also going to have Mercury, Venus, and Mars all transiting Aquarius. You guys are about to get some super awesome definition and probably quite a few major decisions to make as well uh, in the month of February. I will tell you, Leo, right up front that the month of February 2024 is going to enact long-running changes on your life, and I'm seeing you being actually very astute with the decisions that you're making. I think that your keyword for this month is something like that, like astute or trying to make decisions that put you ahead of the game, uh, trying to, from a stance of humility, work as if you're a few steps ahead, perhaps, of any opposition that you're having, as uh, opposition is also a major key component here. Um, as a Leo rising myself, I'm seeing a lot of different opposition in a lot of different places, and it's not that it's negative, it's not that it's um, really even necessarily a bad thing, but it would make sense that we are 
facing opposition in this month, wouldn't it? It would make sense that having Sun, Pluto, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all opposite, as well as Uranus square and Jupiter square. Um, okay, we've got a lot of those kinds of angles working here. Can't you feel it, Leos? Um, I've been having a lot of things in my own experience where it just feels like, what decision do I make here? Like there's a lot of counter forces working where it's like one day it feels like this is the best way to go and the next day it's like, but this is the right way to go. There's a lot, uh, as I was talking about in Cancer's reading, a lot of conflict perhaps between the sentimental and the rational uh, or perhaps the uh, new wave versus the traditional. And um, you, Leos, will be a catalyst of facing that here in February. So let's break that down a little bit. Let's talk about the way that your energy is changing based on these greater crossroads and these greater decisions that you're having to make here. Um, everything Leo needs to be astute, okay? Um, we can't necessarily rely just on the way that things have coalesced. Some of us have to take things a step further. So we have to put real effort into something. We have to put real money into something. We have to put real time into the game so that we are showing ourselves how much we actually care. Okay, so um, care is an important thing to express here. If you have something in your life that's deteriorated, as most people do with this cusp of Pluto, um, if you have something that's kind of worn down, run down, something that's diseased or deteriorated, this is a very important month of taking some real substantial action to resolve that. Hi Virgos and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, what an interesting energy we have coming up for y'all in February. It's kind of like being in the final part of a complex puzzle, okay? We have a very Sphinx-like, riddleistic energy coming up for you in February, Virgos. We have the quincunx coming from all this Aquarius energy, and then the opposition coming with a major Pisces stellium at the end of the month. Um, and I feel like it's like a final boss battle situation for you guys. A lot of people who have a major uh, Virgo energy in their charts are in the final difficult phase of something. And I feel that by March, by the time we get firmly into your axis with Pisces uh, season, you're going to be in um, a much more harmonious shifting phase of life experience. But yes, we do have to get through February 1st. And um, we have a lot of kind of like difficult hurdles to cross, I feel, this month. So I want you guys to kind of like um, prepare yourselves for that. And um, I think that one of the best ways to set out when we're looking to overcome some of these obstacles or some of these difficulties, the best way to set out on it is kind of like, I'm here to bring order to this chaotic situation. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe I'm not a perfect human. Maybe uh, perfect is the enemy of the good, but I can, through my faculty and through my understanding, in a safe way, bring more order to this highly chaotic situation. Um, now, let me tell you something, Virgos, like right at the onset of February, the perfect is not going to be possible here. We have a major Aquarius stellium, and we also then have, as I said, the scrambled mutable uh, Pisces energy coming up. So there's like a shaking up, there's a freshening, there's a revitalization, there is a um, firm knowing that we are reintegrating something that has perhaps deteriorated for a long time. Um, so as you guys are facing this kind of um, status deterioration in your life, um, you don't need to hold yourself to responsibilities or obligations that are not possible with it all. Um, so it's very important in February for you guys. The first like main mundane message I will give you is doing a little bit of an analysis. Am I expecting something of myself that's not realistic? Am I expecting myself to fix a problem that I alone cannot totally um, control? Am I trying to control something I can't? Am I being too forceful with my energy? Is there any kind of health impact also to feeling like this is within my control when it's not. Um, there's a, This, I feel, is like the main issue in the Virgo archetype right now. 
is um, perhaps having so much empathy or having so much understanding of a better way or a vision for a better uh, material context that the current one doesn't feel good. Hi Libras and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, pardon my scratchy voice today, Libras. I'm coming on with a bit of a, you know, winter time, uh, slight cold, not that bad. I, I feel fine. I'm just a little bit, um, you know, kind of with a scratchy voice uh, today. Um, but nonetheless, we have uh, readings to get down to. So let's uh, talk a little bit about you guys for um, February uh, 2024. Um, major power, okay, major activation of the south node. We're going to get a really strong trine from Sun, Pluto, and Aquarius, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Aquarius uh, transiting through February. And I feel that this is going to finally uh, kind of reveal to you some of the secrets about this south node in Libra transit, what a uh, sphinx-like and ritualistic energy that has been, honestly, for the last few years, the south node in Scorpio and the south node in Libra. It can be very difficult uh, to define, but that is going to be de defined uh, this February. Um, as you start to see a certain adjudication happening in your life, um, this could be a time where you have um, marriages or divorces, also, this could be a time where you are spiritually attaching yourself or detaching from people, events, or um, goals. So basically, there's a change in the fabric of your life happening in the month of February, and it's really going to sink in by the time March comes around. Um, and I feel that you guys have more control over this attachment process than you realize. So I've been seeing a lot of Libras kind of like not giving to themselves or bestowing upon themselves the real vision of control in their lives because it feels maybe overwhelming. Or sometimes we get worried also to stand in our own power or to actually take um, on the liability that true control, true power, or true responsibility gives as well. Um, so there's an importance in the month of February, Libra, placed upon identifying what liabilities you want to take on in your life, uh, which ones are too risky, which ones are not. Um, like Scorpios, for example, this month, you could be seeing like, wow, I really have a lot of different things in my life that uh, pose certain risks, and am I okay with those risks? Uh, for you, it's not so severe because you've got a lot of maybe like legalistic protection represented by the South Node in Libra, and also the trine from Aquarius is much more beneficial uh, than, for example, the square happening to Scorpio. But it's kind of similar in the sense, um, especially if you guys are on the cusp of Libra and Scorpio or you have a lot of Scorpio in your chart, there's kind of this feeling of like, I have a lot of vulnerabilities or I can only now realize the level of attention I can give to certain things. Um, this does not have to be materialistic at all. This could also be in the realm of, I now see how many different diversified aspects of my life are taking up my energy. So basically having like your energy split in like seven or eight different ways. I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. Um, in fact, a lot of wise people would tell you that to split up your resources or to split up your energy is prudent because if one thing fails, you're not looking at total and complete losses. You're looking at um, reduced loss risk. At the same time, you're looking at reduced energy being able to be put into each individual focus because they're not, you know, because they are offset by so many other focuses. Hi, Scorpios, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. A very um, exciting and enthusiastic month of February. Um, I'm really excited to see what's um, happening for you guys here. As I feel you to be more unencumbered leaving the month of February than perhaps I've ever felt you guys. Uh, so Pluto having moved into Aquarius, uh, I feel it to be a major breath of fresh air. I mean, as it would be for you all, right? It's uh, Pluto, your ruling planet moving into the fixed air sign of Aquarius. Um, you guys need some air, okay? Um, you guys need to refresh and refrain from some of the previous heavy emotional habits. 
So the month of February for you guys is about changing your emotional habits, especially if you're in the dark time of the year. Um, I mean, regardless, really, but um, here is where you start to come to a different conclusion about some of the fears and internal intuitions that you've been having that have been getting you off for a long time. I feel that Pluto and late Capricorn for you all, while it was very empowering in a roundabout way, in a backhanded way, it was also kind of um, leading to a lot of fear-based reactions, or it was leading to different kinds of intuitions that perhaps were taking into account certain worst case scenarios and certain irreversible, whether in real life or not, um, gut feelings. So all of that irreversible fear, all of that, you know, if I mess this up, I can never rectify it. Or if I do this wrong, or if I break this, or if I misstep or um, don't just do perfectly in my life, all of that can start to be placed aside here in February, and I'm seeing a lot of empowerment coming to you guys here as you start to give yourself more air and more breathing room to be a human, okay? Um, so there's a humanizing taking place. Does that scare some of you? I'm kidding. Um, uh, a lot of those Teflon stories are over. A lot of those um, ideas about being unreachable or being totally separate from other people are starting to fade. And there's going to be this part of you that now becomes very essential in certain environments. And I love this because one of the problems I was seeing for Scorpio over the last few years was this um, difficulty in like feeling relevant in certain situations or like kind of feeling outcast or feeling like a sore thumb or feeling like the tallest person in the room, you know, like towering over everyone else and everyone is kind of like, you know, kind of intimidated or uh, that, that was very much the energy of Scorpio for the last few years with a uh, late Pluto and Capricorn. However, now there's a humanizing taking place. There's a humanization. There is a humanity. Um, perhaps pursuits in the humanities, um, liberal arts, okay? Um, working with human collective goals, uh, such as hunger, food, water, um, helping your family in a different way. If you have any like schisms or what would I say, like factionalization in your family, which I feel is something that Scorpios have really been hit by hard over these last few years, um, what you can now start to do is help them with like a snap of the fingers to do things that they haven't been able to do in a long time. This is kind of where it's at for you guys. And this is just, this is so brand new. This is so brand new for February. And it's kind of hard for me to explain it, but it's like you possess something that other people don't possess. Hi Sagittarius, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. Happy February. Uh, what a wonderful, light, vibrant crossing point for Sagittarius. I want to give you guys a bit of a um, congratulations here as we're moving into February, as I feel that you are about to get a huge load off. I feel that there's a lot more light and um, ease coming into your life here, a lot better full picture situations, a lot better organization, and a lot more um, expertise as well being demonstrated by any Sagittarius. Um, we have a lot to talk about this month, Sag. Um, finally, you are totally coming out of that sort of like wounded Jupiter and Capricorn energy that was coming in in 2020. Uh, we have Pluto and Aquarius now. We have the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all moving through the sign of Aquarius, which is going to give you a very healing and rejuvenating sextile energy. And this is going to relieve so much in your life. Things are simpler now for Sagittarius. Things are more in black and white. You have more writing or more paperwork or more official um, understanding and more structure to what you're doing. And this is going to allow you to shoot for the stars in a more proactive and less anxious way. Uh, so the way that I'm seeing Sagittarius, uh, the psychic image that I'm getting is being in a very, how can I explain this? Like as you're aiming or as you're looking to the next expanse, as you're stepping into that sacred three of wands, um, 
archetype, your feet underneath you are not as shaky. Okay, so there's like a stronger stance. There is a more, like maybe a tremor is going away here. Um, I've noticed a lot of Sagittarians having like essential tremor. So they're holding something and the hand is shaking or the knees have felt weak because of all of the weight that they've been carrying. And I'm feeling that starting in February, you guys start to get a little bit more solid, interestingly, because some type of weight is off your shoulders and you're going to start healing. So um, healing is very important for you guys here. I'm seeing like perhaps a downsizing for you guys. And um, if you wanted to listen to the Scorpio reading, it might also help uh, because it's kind of a similar message coming up for you all uh, with the uh, Pluto shift happening and uh, changing that semi-sextile energy, which is very difficult to have for the last 15 years that you've had. Um, what's going to start happening is you're going to have less energy put into things that don't matter, and you're going to have more left over to stand strong. Um, so let's have fun with this, Sagittarius. Let's maybe enjoy the process of moving rather than being overwhelmed by it. Let's enjoy the new prospect of a different chapter rather than feeling anxious about the unknown elements of it. Uh, let's start to lean back into that sacred Sagittarian optimism. Hi Capricorns and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. Uh, I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. Wow, what a uh, major paradigm shift coming in for you guys. Congratulations. Here we are moving into a very new and fresh wavelength. It's going to be great for you guys. I know that we have Pluto changing sign. Thank God. What a relief to get some of those um, restraints off of you. What a relief to um, not be in that Plutonian energy anymore for now, at least. Um, I'm so excited to be talking um, about the sort of like nuanced Capricorn experience this month um, because relief is really the main key here. Um, as I was doing a bit of spirit writing for you all, I kept uh, coming to the word relief this month. Um, I also had written down um, beaming and strength in what is shown now. So there's a revealing coming in in the month of February for you all. Um, there's a seeing uh, of what has amounted from certain um, energy investments over many years. And for a lot of you, it's going to reward you more than you thought it would. Uh, we had a wonderful January for you all to really um, have like a final cherry put on top of the structures that you were building. Um, it felt like you guys really um, kind of had a shooting star kind of situation coming up in your life there where you got to really shine and you got to really... Uh, show people in an unexpected or symbolic way all of the efforts of the last 15 years. Um, so February uh, for you and for everybody is kind of a tricky month to work with, uh, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and experiencing the dark time of the year when we have a new year of Pluto coming on or a new, also a Chinese Lunar New Year happening this month, as well as Pluto being in a new sign. Um, there's a lot of alchemy i think this month because of that because of having you know the last one of the last signs uh come up aquarius and pisces the last signs of the zodiac being activated by the sun this month while having this new injection of dragon year energy new pluto and aquarius it's like wow um this can really create worlds this can really create uh lifetimes as well um, new life chapters, new experiences that you've never um, dreamed that could really be possible for you can start to coalesce here. And uh, what I've been recommending for other signs in this portion of the Zodiac, Scorpio, Sag, and you, is to not be afraid to really take things down a notch, okay? To not be afraid to uh, do one final level of reduction in your life in whatever way that you feel called. Uh, because after we firmly get into the dragon year, uh, specifically when March comes around, we're going to want to be looking toward expansion and we're going to be wanting to look toward, okay, the next story for me or the next experience that I need to have in my life. And that is going to need, that's going to deeply need us to be present and not like, for example, burned out or injured or overwhelmed or overclad, okay? to uh, stand in that incredible vision 
of how we're going to move forward now. We've got to give it to ourselves. Hi Aquarius, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I hope you're all doing well. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead. What an incredible supercharged month for you all. We have Pluto in your sign. We have a new chapter starting. Uh, congratulations to those of you aging up here. Happy birthday. Um, it's Aquarius season as I'm filming this. And what a new wave, new burst of energy, new momentum coming in. Things are resolved for you guys here. Your keyword this month is resolution. Okay, um, if I were to choose any, it's also um, a baton is being passed to you here. Um, you're taking ownership of something here. I feel some of you maybe have bought new houses or there's a new energetic house that you are stepping into here. So for all Aquarians and probably most of the signs, but especially for you guys, you have a new feeling of home coming in in the month of February. What does that mean to you? What does that uh, reflect also in the physical material world? Is this a new mental mindset home? Is this a new physical home? Uh, what does this mean to you, this feeling of new home? Um, I want to focus on that in this reading, and I want to also just get the finger to the wind of some of the other uh, potentials coming in for you this month. So uh, sit back and enjoy it. Um, feel free to do some journaling here as well as we're talking as um, I feel that you guys have to get the strongest mind. Um, is strongest the right word? Sometimes strong means different things to different people. That's a problematic word um, during this period of time, strong. Uh, some people think that that means like being able to lift really heavy things. Sometimes people think that that means resilience, uh, but it actually does not mean resilience. Okay. Um, what strong to me means here in this context for you guys is um, rich with capacity. The mind has to be rich with capacity here. We do not want to grasp, especially onto things that have like rotted or things that have ended, things that can never be the way that they used to be, things that are in history. We don't have Pluto and Capricorn right now. And I feel that perhaps we're all kind of hurting a little bit during this time along these lines of like, you know, my family home that I grew up in or my ancestral land or my family's connection or whatever it was is perhaps historical now. And I have to understand how this moves forward. Um, I'm also seeing people perhaps having a difficult relationship here between the business and the personal or between, um, the commodification or the sentimentality of certain things. I'm seeing people also being too attached to things sentimentally here when those eras perhaps have passed. Hi, Pisces, and welcome to your February 2024 forecast. I'm coming on to talk to you about the month ahead, just getting some of my charts pulled up. Um, what a what what a masterful period of time we have coming up for you all. Um, I'm really looking forward to the character progression coming up for Pisces people. I want you guys to really uh, lean into this reading this month and uh, maybe come back to it a few times because I think that we have some uh, really uh, powerful energies coming up that hopefully I can articulate for you all. And I'm sure you're feeling it. Uh, coming into this month, we're coming up towards your season. We're in your collective 12th house right now as I'm filming, and we have this really uh, momentous and historic Pisces stellium coming at the end of the month. Um, so it's time to prepare for that, isn't it? It's time to um, time to think about what we need to cleanse, purify, ritualize, wash out, and um, move forward from in our lives. Now, um, we're beginning the month, Pisces, with a lot of energy in your sign to begin with. I mean, we have Saturn and Neptune and the minor asteroid of Nessus. And then by the end of the month, we're going to have Saturn, Sun, Mercury, Nessus, and Neptune all in your sign. And then uh, Venus and Mars trailing and um, preparing to follow. So this whole year, actually, of 2024 is a very Piscean year. It's a very uh, Neptunian story that a lot of us are facing as we're really... Uh, challenged to discover the true momentum, the true um, context of the different um, aspects of our experience that we have been looking for, getting to the core of things, getting to the real significant root, 
Also not getting too caught up on the face of things, but rather understanding the real context and the real story at play, regardless of what we are seeing, you know, on paper or what we're seeing on record or what we're seeing um, at the surface. So Pisces is challenged in this month to go beneath the surface and to actually extract or understand the deeper meaning of what's going on uh, in this time. <clears throat> try, if you have any hard decisions that you're making in February, try to limit the degree to which you're obsessed with the surface face level aspect of it and try to make your decisions based on what's really happening. I know that that maybe is um, obvious when it's said that way, but I think it needs to be said that way because I'm seeing a lot of Pisces, also a lot of Capricorns, a lot of Cancers getting stuck on the minutia, getting stuck on the way things look on paper, getting stuck on aspects of maybe a subpar experience that are not actually getting to the root of why it's subpar. 